What's up everybody, and today we are going to be looking at Mesmeratu from Jacob Jazz, a platforming hell adventure with some roguelike elements put into it. Discover a strange world full of poor monster villages, stinky talking characters, impossible rogue platforms, and and a giant fish kidnapped inside an owl's beak. Trust me, this is not even the weirdest part of this game. First thing I want to touch on is Jacob's mind. Are you okay, man? Do you need somebody to talk to? I would say this is something you would have in a fever dream, but it's really like an acid trip gone bad. Grotesque creatures and a mix between 2D backgrounds, full motion 3D backgrounds, nothing is cohesive. Just take a look at the opening of the game. I was confused right off the bat. This game really reminds me of Ghost and Goblins, if anyone remembers playing that nightmare. Luckily, you are given checkpoints and lives to help you get through the levels, but they won't last long, and if it's game over, all the way back to the beginning to try again. Then, the music. Oh, the music is great! If you can drown out the screams of what sound like women and children from your brain. And you might be able to, just for how many times that you're gonna die in this game. Mesmeratu's mechanics are top class. You always want tight controls when it comes to a platformer, and you'll enjoy jumping and killing enemies throughout this game. I have died many times in this game, and couldn't blame anything else but my own mistakes. The double jump, wall jump, and mid-air controls are responsive, combat it's a little finicky. I've tried to swing the sword one direction and it swung the other, and if you're playing on a controller, I find the down butt slam is very easily triggered from the thumbstick. No issues I saw on the keyboard, so that may be the best way to play this game. Another interesting feature is the way that the levels change. Sometimes small ways, sometimes the whole landscape will be a widely different area. I'm not sure if it's randomly generated or if it takes your progress and adds a value to it to determine how the layout should be. If it does do it this way, it takes inspiration from Demon Souls. If you don't know how Demon Souls did it, they had this funny number system, and the more that you died, the harder the game became, and the less you died, it became easier. Seems strange, but that's what they did. And I wonder if Jacob has done the same thing, because it seems whenever I make a long stretch without dying, the level seems less complex or difficult. But if I die three or four times in one area, it's like the whole world hates me and wants me to spend an eternity in this one spike trap. Another part which I'm not sure is a bug or a feature at this point, in all honesty, the things this game puts me through, I wouldn't be surprised if it's another torture feature. When you die and return to the checkpoint, there are times where your health is only going to be replenished by half instead of the full 100%, and damage from enemies seem to be variable as well. Sometimes the enemies will just take a sliver of your health, and the next run through the same type of enemies will almost damn near kill you. Which, again, I don't know if this is a bug, but I have a feeling this is intentional. Level design is also really weird but well put together for being jumbled every time you die. The first stages are the tutorials on how do you use double jump, head jump, and wall jump. Trust me, you're going to be seeing these levels a lot in the beginning. And I'm saying the first stages because they look like the same area, but honestly, I can't read this map and figure out where I'm at on it. The next stage has you in this jungle type where gravity can be flipped, which is cool, but really hurts my frontal cortex trying to point out all the stuff that I need to do. I'm surprised I honestly didn't get a nosebleed. 
After that, from what I've seen, is a variation of these mechanics and new enemies that will kill you over and over again. A tower climb almost reminded me of Ice Climbers, an underwater level that you're in for honestly about 5 minutes, and an ice level with slippery platforms that remind me of... Mario 64. That's as far as I got. I just kept dying in whatever this hell level is. I don't know if I'm close to the end or just scratching the surface. But I can't stop playing it. Due to its oddity and fun platforming, I walk away from it and 15 to 20 minutes later, like a crackhead needing another fix, I'm back at it, just trying to get further. The trailer video has a joke ESRB rating on it that says use of drugs. I thought this was talking about the level design, but no, it's talking about me, like a bad habit that will destroy your life and have your wife and kids walk out on you because you're neglecting everything. That's what this game will do to you. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe not that severe. But this is a great game, and it kind of flew under the radar of a lot of people. And it may be overlooked due to the imagery, and thinking that this game is just trying to be edgy. Which, I don't know, it may or may not be true. But this game is difficult, bloody, anger-inducing good time. And I don't think you should overlook it. This game is $8, and I have almost three hours in this game, of course, repeating the same levels, but due to the variety, it's still a whole lot of fun. Don't sleep on this game. I have a link for the Steam page down in the description, as well as the Discord if you guys want to come in and chat. Thanks for watching this train wreck all the way to the end. If you guys did like the video, leave a like, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm always looking for new indie games, and for a thank you for all the support you guys have given me, I'm soon going to be doing game giveaways to give something back to this community in the very, very near future. But, like always guys, I'll see you in the next video, and have fun.